I now give the floor to the representative of Russian Federation. You have the floor, please. At the beginning of my statement, I can't not echo the condolences towards all victims and casualties from the terrible terrorist attacks in Kabul. It is clear that it is ISIL. But, President, we'd like to thank the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, for his assessments of the humanitarian, the, the, the developments in northern Ethiopia. We also welcome the participation in today's open briefing of the, the permanent representative of Ethiopia to the UN, Taya Selassie. The Russian Federation is carefully following the military and political developments in the region. We regret that the unilateral humanitarian ceasefire announced at the end of June by Addis Ababa has broken. Units from the Tigray People's Liberation Front continue fighting, establishing control over a series of regions, not only Tigray, but also in neighbouring regions of Afar and Amhara, previously untouched by conflict. A particular concern are attempts made by Tigrayan forces to cut off humanitarian assistance routes, including their taking control of the strategic highway linking Ethiopia and Djibouti, which threatens to worsen an already complex humanitarian situation and increasing flows of refugees and IDPs. The humanitarian situation in the region remains indeed tough. At the same time, the federal government is continuing to make significant contributions towards alleviating it. We welcome the efforts of the Ethiopian authorities recently getting a humanitarian convoy from the World Food Programme through to Simera. We welcome also the creation in the region of an emergency coordination centre. We hope that its establishment will help implement the plan to send to Tigray a hundred lorries carrying humanitarian assistance every day and also resolving the situation of, refu of Eritrean refugees who are in particularly dire straits. We are convinced that in order to address the situation it is necessary first and foremost to depoliticize the North Ethiopian humanitarian file. Providing humanitarian assistance in the the context of the ongoing political standoff and the toxic media atmosphere has little chance of success. Nor can we agree with the bias in public focus in the work of humanitarians in Tigray. When providing humanitarian assistance, it's important to pay attention to other regions too, including Amhara, Aromia and Somali, who also have significant humanitarian needs. These are linked to droughts, floods, plagues of locusts and problems with planting crops. The basis of these efforts should remain UN General Assembly Resolution 46182 and the UN Guiding Principles on Humanitarian Assistance. We call on OCHA to pay particular attention to establishing privileged and constructive dialogue with the federal government. We fully support, Mr Secretary-General, the work that you've been doing to launch a political dialogue as soon as possible. We are convinced that this dialogue should be led by Ethiopians themselves, with the support, first and foremost, from the African community. Any potential external assistance should be done while fully respecting the sovereignty, territorial integrity and political independence of the country. In June's elections in Ethiopia gave convincing proof that the federal authorities can unify the Ethiopian community. We are convinced that they can independently work towards normalising the situation and generally put the country back on the right development trajectory. Our African partners and the international community should simply support these efforts of the Ethiopian government. We'd also note in this connection the appointment of the High Representative of the African Union and former, former president, president of Nigeria, Abbasanjo. 
it's important to understand also that attempts to undermine the situation and also exert pressure on the democratically elected government of Ethiopia, including through adopting unilateral sanctions, will only further stoke the conflict. Equally, nor will the crisis be solved by discussing it at the Security Council. More, it would be more effective if each member of the Security Council made its own contribution to resolving the situation. The emphasis should be on quiet diplomacy and bilateral channels of privileged communication. The Russian Federation is ready to ensure this. Thank you for your attention. I thank the representative of the Russian Federation for her statement.